Hey class, welcome back. So today we're going to go over a typical PA that you might find in a small club, including the different components you'll find, the different signal flow stages, and how to plug it all in. Let's start with the different components. So of course we've got our microphones. That's going to be uh, how we're going to uh, convert any of our acoustic energy to electronic. We've got our direct boxes for those that already have some sort of electrical output. We've got our low voltage cables. These are going to allow us to plug our mics and any low voltage uh, components together. Uh, we also got our high voltage cables. These are going to allow us to plug an amplifier into a passive speaker. We've also got snakes. These are going to be what we use to kind of clean up the stage a little bit uh, to make it where we don't have a whole bunch of cables running through. We might have just one big cable that can send for this particular example, 8XLR one way and 4XLR the other way. We've also got mixers. This is where we're going to combine all of our signals uh, to output, uh, whether it be to the left-right output or to our different auxes for our monitor mixes. We've also got EQ. Typical live sound EQ is going to be a 32-band EQ. These allow us to easily uh, get in and, you know, if there's a, a room mode or some sort of feedback problem, we can correct that uh, pretty quickly. We've also got crossovers. We'll talk about crossovers a little more, but effectively it's just going to divide our full range signal to where our highs and mids are going to be allowed to output out an output and our lows are going to output a separate output. We've also got our front of house speakers. Uh, these are pretty neat. Obviously, this is what the audience will be listening to. And if you'll notice, our monitor speakers can sometimes be the exact same speaker. The difference is which direction is it facing front of house speaker for the audience, our monitors are gonna be for the performers. Then we've also got our subwoofers. Subwoofer is obviously gonna be for the low end, uh, bassy kind of stuff, our kick drums, fun stuff. Cool, so let's go a little deeper into crossovers and what those are. Uh, what a crossover does is it's going to divide our full range signal into either three separate bands or two separate bands. For our examples today, I'm gonna to use mostly two bandy uh, crossovers. So it's going to be a the low frequencies are going to be split to the subwoofers, the mids and highs are going to be split to the front of house. So passive versus active speakers. So at a typical club, you're going to find one of either. You're going to find passive speakers or active speakers. So depending, it's going to make a big difference uh, on how it's plugged in and our signal flow. So a passive speaker requires a separate matching amplifier and an active crossover is usually recommended for our subwoofers. Uh, because they do have a little bit of a passive crossover functionality. However, it's usually not set right where you want it to be. So that's where that active crossover comes into play. And then we've also got active speaker. Active speakers are neat because those are going to have an amplifier, a matching amplifier already built in and a crossover set already. So the tweeters already just getting the highs, the wolfers getting the mids. And if we had a three-way active speaker, the the big speaker would be getting the lows. So they're pretty neat. Uh, active definitely make it a lot easier uh, to plug in. So the next thing we have to be concerned about is what kind of mixer do they have? Do they have a passive or a powered mixer? A passive mixer's outputs are all gonna be line level. So you don't have to worry about blowing up a, uh, an active speaker uh, if you, you know, as long as your levels are right. Um, however, a powered mixer is gonna actually output high voltage because it has an amplifier built in. So you don't want to ever plug high voltage into an active speaker because it's going to pretty much blow up immediately because you're plugging an amplifier into an amplifier. So we just got to be careful of that. Um, so again, a power mixer outputs high voltage, but it also outputs line level, which is pretty neat. Usually through the front, we're going to have what we call a preamp output. And I'll show you how to take advantage of that here in just a little bit. Signal flow. So the most important part, of course, is how to plug it all in. So now that we know our components, uh, you know, a little more familiar with them, how do we plug them in? So that's signal flow. That's the path an audio signal takes from the source to the output. And very simply, an output must always be plugged into an input. So the microphone, it has an output. It's going to be output to the mixer. The mixer was going to output to the input on the amplifier the amplifier will output an input into the passive speaker. Again, if this was an active speaker, we'd probably plug the mixer line level straight into the active speaker. So let's talk about those traditional signal flow and their different power stages. 
So traditional signal flow that we've probably talked about in the past in audio one uh, would be uh, capture, store, and monitor because we're gonna need to store that information. However, for live situations, we're not storing the information. So we're just gonna have two uh, stages. We've got the capture stage and the monitor stage. So the capture stage is where we're going to be uh, inputting uh, our mics or our DI boxes into the mixer at either mic or line level. And if they aren't already at line level, we'll use the mixer to get them up to line level. Then the mixer is going to output either line level or speaker level, depending on if it's an active or a passive mixer. Um, so we'll go over that here in just a little bit too. Um, so first let's talk about capture stages. So for most live venues, uh, capture stage is gonna be the same. It's the stage where we're plugging our mics into the mixer and getting our signal up to line level, ready to just be output out of either the main output or out of an aux output. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at that. So first thing when we're capturing, we wanna select the source, whether it be the kick drum, the snare, bass, or guitar, or vocal. For this example, let's use my voice, because that's what we're already using right now. My voice is an acoustic instrument, so it is gonna require a microphone, won't be able to use a DI box. So there we, that's the next step, we identify the source and whether it will need a DI or a mic. Next we wanna do is plug the mic or the DI into the channel's preamp input. So we would just select what channel that particular guy needs to line up on. You know, if it was a kick, we might want it on one, you know, but you wanna label it out, get it how we want it. Um, for our example, I have a mixer here out of battery it looks like uh, but uh, our uh, for this uh, mixer this is a uh, an iPad showing the different parameters that we're gonna find within my mixer so I've already plugged my two mics in to the mixer I plugged my condenser mic into channel 5 and I plugged a dynamic mic into channel 6 and those I uh, increased uh, the fader to unity so that I could see uh, the signal that was coming within so let's let's come over here again so we've plugged into the channel the channels preamp input. Next thing we want to do is label the channel. So in, uh, obviously in a analog world we might use board tape but in the digital realm we can click in here and label as necessary. I want to make sure we're labeling. Uh, you know I got my gig downtown because I literally brought board tape with me. So it's, 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 it's key to keep track of where you've input your microphones. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to assign that channel to go out the main output bus. So by clicking in here, let's click into our input section here. It will allow our fat channel to come out. And within this uh, input section, I can select my input source, whether it be my mic or USB. Uh, I can adjust my gain like we talked about. We want to make sure that's a good line level. So check, 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 check. Hey, hey, hey. Make sure that sounds good. And then we want to make sure that it's outputting out the main output bus. So that's with this guy here. So if I deselect this, you'll notice that my condenser mic no longer makes its way to my main output. Check, check, check. Oh. Check, check, check. Now we're just hearing my dynamic mic. Check, check, check. Now I've got my condenser mic back in there. So now that we've got that channel making its way to the main output bus, that's where we would adjust the preamp signal to line level. We talked about we just use that gain, uh, get it to where our signal is looking good, padding if necessary, and then ultimately adjust any alternate mixes to the aux outputs. So if we knew that we needed we need to get that signal somewhere else, like a, a monitor on stage or maybe an, an in-ear, we could do that through our auxes. Right now I'm using my, uh, my headphones uh, as my monitor, uh, so I would, and I'm using that out of aux 3, so I would come to, oh, let me open my mixer again. Cool. So within the mixer, here is our main output, so we're seeing the faders that go to our main output. If I click in on here, it's going to show me my additional outputs. So I don't just have a main output, I also have an additional eight analog outputs. So I'm using one of those analog outputs for my in-ear. So that's aux three. So I would select in aux three. And right now I'm not listening to those mics, but I could simply by turning them up. Check, 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 check. Cool, cool. Now that gets us to the next stage. 
that's the monitor stage. So the next stage, once we've captured, we're seeing good signal within our mixer, we uh, want to make sure our amplifiers are on. Uh, we want to make sure those are on before we ever tur uh, turn up our master faders. Uh, so we want to make sure our master faders and our aux masters are down. We'll make sure all of our electronic gear, such as our mixer, everything before the amplifier, make sure that's all already on, and then we can turn on our amplifier. So we'll make sure electronics on first, then our amplifiers. And then once our amplifiers are on, that's where we can start to increase our master fader and our aux master faders. While we're doing that, we want to make sure we're avoiding clipping. So we'll, we'll watch our signal, check, 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 make sure that that signal doesn't get into the red. So we'll keep an eye on that signal. And same here, we wanna make sure we don't distort the amplifiers. Uh, because the amplifier itself will also have a little red light so we can keep an eye on that make sure we don't uh, pop the speaker uh, you know because it was given too much amplification cool so let's start going over how to actually plug some of those in uh, you know because we want to talk about again signal flow so mic up to line line to speaker so a typical setup, obviously there's no such thing as typical. So we're gonna go over a few different uh, setups, but the most simple setup is actually an active mixer with two passive speakers. It's pretty simple. The active mixer has two amplifiers built in. Uh, and so it effectively, we use one output. It's high voltage because it's an amplifier built in. This high voltage signal will make its way to a passive speaker, which is facing the crowd. And then channel two will high voltage out to a passive speaker that's facing the performer. Very simple, very basic. Uh, you'll see these a lot at kind of smaller bars. The next step up using that same active mixer and two passive speakers is an upgrade by just adding one active monitor. Because we talked about this preamp output on that active mixer, that's pre the amplifier, that means we can actually take our low voltage preamp out and plug that into an active monitor for the performers while still using uh, output amp one and output amp two high voltage to our passive left and right speakers for the uh, audience. Cool. So a typical club setup is going to get a little more complex though. So let's let's look into this. It's not too crazy. Let's keep. We've got to make sure we keep uh, the differential on high voltage versus low voltage. But the mics and DIs are inputted the same. Except this time we're probably going to use a passive mixer. Most venues will be using passive mixers because they're going to want separate amplifiers. So this passive mixer, again, it's going to output line level. So we would output left and right output to a stereo EQ. This stereo EQ is going to output to a left right input on a crossover. And this crossover actually is going to have four separate outputs. One is for the left right with a high pass on it. The other is the left right with a low pass. So the high pass signal, we're going to output to an amplifier, that amplifier then is gonna output that high voltage speaker level to our passive speakers. We also have an amplifier here out of the low pass that is going to be used to power the passive subwoofers. And again, the, the same, our aux outs are gonna to go to an EQ, the EQ will hit an amplifier, the amplifier will hit a passive monitor or speaker. Cool, a typical stereo club PA with a passive mixer and active speakers. So this actually is one of the more simple ones and it's slowly become the most popular one uh, now that everyone's kind of getting away from passive speakers and making their way towards active speakers where the crossover and the amplifier are built in. So again, the same, our, our mic and DI plugged in micro line level to the mixer. The mixer being a passive mixer is gonna increase that signal to line level. We will output that line level via our output here to a stereo EQ, that stereo EQ will then output straight to our subwoofers, which is pretty neat. That means that subwoofer, because it has an amp and a crossover built in, it can take that full range signal. Then our subwoofers are neat because they have what we call a through output. That's gonna send that full range signal through to the next speaker. So that next speaker would be our front of house speaker. So that means our left uh, front of house is gonna come off the left subwoofer which is coming out the left side of the EQ, it's coming to the left out of the passive mixer. 
and the same for this for the right we're going to go out of the mixer into the eq eq to the subwoofer subwoofer through to the active front of house and monitors simple simple as well we typically would take aux out to an eq eq to that active monitor because again that amplifier is built in so if you notice there's no high voltage cables at all here because all of the speakers have the amplifier built in cool so now just to wrap up a little bit i hope that uh clarified a few things for you uh but if not definitely uh take a look at it again uh let me know if you have any questions um we definitely we went over components so you want to make sure that you're aware of what each of those components are and how they uh, fit into that signal flow we want to talk about the active versus passive active meaning that the amplifier is built in passive meaning that it is not talk about our different power stages mic line and speaker and how speaker doesn't really go down to line line doesn't go down to mic so it's usually we're stepping it up as the signal flow goes out to in every time either getting a little louder or staying the same line to line or line to speaker and then we also talked about uh, signal flow you know capture store monitor and how in live sound we don't need to store so we're just capturing and monitoring. And then of course we went over those typical setups. So again, please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again, have a great day.